Uh, so hi. Hey, Tony, it's so great to talk to you today. Hi, thank you, Amy. It's good to be here. Well, thank you. Um, so, Red Shoes and the Seven Dwarfs, a South Korean animation company. How did you become involved? I know, isn't that crazy? Um, you know, I, I didn't know about the studio at all, but I, my end to it was a very good friend from Disney that I worked with who's an excellent, excellent character designer. He was hired by the studio, and I just happened to be out in Korea in Seoul um, doing a speaking engagement and had lunch with him. He en ended up showing me around. Get, I got the whole tour of the studio, met the directors, the producers, and they they just opened up this whole project to me and I just fell in love with it. I love the theme of it. I loved what it was about. I love the production value and the, and the quality level. And, I, and I'm a big fan of independent films. I'm an independent filmmaker myself now, largely. And and so I wanted to support them. I said, anything you need, let me know. And they sure did. They said, we need a voice director. And I said, Act, uh, yeah, that would be great. So I was involved with a lot of you know, casting ideas too, which was fun. They really just took me under right into the project 100%. Awesome. So speaking as a voice director, so what all did that entail working on the movie? I'm familiar with directing, not sure how it, Zooms that I'm used to directors I've met with before talking about working in the booth and things like that, but they're also back in the animation portion of it too. So how did that all come together for yeah, you? Yeah, I worked very closely with the director of the film, the script writer, uh, and then the casting directors too, and formulating plans of one, who's gonna do the roles. So um, that was the big discussion up front. Um, and we really got our A-list group of everybody that we wanted, which was really cool. That doesn't always happen but because of availability and things like that. But it did work out for us. We're totally happy with the cast. And what I would do is um, take the script early on and review it myself. And I'm thinking about, you know, what are the, what are the things that the actors are gonna need to know? Because you're right, they, they work, you know, in, a, in a, a little booth by themselves. They're not an act in, in a reactionary way too, that they're usually playing off of somebody. So I'll, I'll play the other parts and I'll read against them so that they get a sense of timing and rhythm um, and have a, a sense of the energy scene. And that really helps them. But then we talk very extensively too. I have to set up every single sequence. Okay, now you're, you're, you're in this situation and you're running and there's a big wooden monster after you and I need this it's those kind of things that if you don't get it right up front and it's not exactly clear then it's not going to be what you need later on when you're in the editorial room so it's almost like we do a lot of cuts like they do in live action so we have something to always cut to that always works uh, when we get back to editorial so was there anything that kind of came about during the recording sessions that ended up maybe not on the script that made your way into the film? Yeah, we had some I came out of looking at some of the storyboards. I remember there was a scene where Sam Claflin, um, he had to stuff a cake or something in his mouth and while he was saying the line and we actually in his hotel room the funny thing is we recorded him in G because he was there He was there shooting a live action film um, um, at the time. And so we had to fly out in one weekend to the Fiji Islands, record him in his hotel room on his break. And he gave 100%, even though he was exhausted from all the shooting he was doing on the water that, that whole week. Um, and even to the point where he, we took a lunch break and he did a little drawing for me, Goofy, because he knew that I had drawn a little Pumbaa drawing for him. And in exchange, he, he did his best Goofy for me. Oh, that's, and I cool. can think of worse places you, you had to go to right? the beach. <laughs> it was a tight two day, two and a half days or something though. It was tight. Oh, that's right. So you're like looking out the window, like yeah. it looks like one out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, you mentioned that you really kind of got your dream cast for that. I'd love to know more about when you were casting and what ideas you had for that and how, that, uh, how you were able to get everybody Well, I remember the director and uh, producer came to me and they were talking about um, the ca some casting ideas for The Magic Mirror. And I said, oh, Patrick Warburton. We got to get Patrick Warburton for this. Because it was already kind of written in a very dark way and it could, and it could skew really kind of dark and serious or it could be kind of dark and funny and 
And I knew that Patrick would deliver the latter, you know, he would come in and we'd give it a warm it. Um, and having worked with him on Kronk and the Emperor's New Groove and about four other projects since then, um, I, I just really love Patrick and what he can give you. So um, they love that idea right off the bat and, and we got Patrick in there. So I was really happy about that. Um, that change and, and what I was able to give to them. That's amazing. So I, um, speaking of some of your characters, I know that you've got so many classic characters you've had your hands in and, and I feel like I sense a lot of comedy in that. Are you drawn to the comedic no characters? More yeah. than uh, I, I absolutely <laughs> am. I mean, you know, um, it's funny that animators, especially back in the nineties when I was doing stuff at Disney, we were, we were cast just like live action actors are cast based on our strong suits, you know, and, you know, and some animators are good with doing the princesses and some are better with the villains and the heroes and the, and the comedy characters were definitely my thing. That was my shtick. So I fell in love with doing comedy characters because mostly because I just, there's that part of me that wants to see a reaction right. to the, to my work. And you know, when something is working, when somebody laughs and, <laughs> And I love that kind of connection with the audience. Well, thank you so much for taking this. It was so much fun. And I can't wait for everybody to get a chance to see Red Shoes and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Take thank care. You. Have a good day. Thanks, you too.